good. Copyright protection. That's what they used to have to make you do. You had to dig through the manual. Is this your first time playing King Quest 4? No, but for the... You folks at home, we're gonna say no. Well, get it. Let's just watch. Anyway, I am the Blues 32, and this is King's Quest 4. Been doing a lot of, uh, you know, action-y games for a while. And decided to heck with it. With the return of his long-lost son, Alexander, and the rescue of his daughter, Rosella, from the terrible dragon, old King Graham decides to pass on his adventurous hat to younger blood. While his wife sits there with a vapid smile, he flings the battered hat towards his children while his wife, Queen Valenice, proudly looks on. Hey, I got it, I got it. The hat arches through the air. Suddenly, King Graham experiences a terrible squeezing pain in his chest. Help me! He rasps. The adventurer's hat lies unclaimed upon the floor, forgotten. Things are not looking good for old King Graham. King Graham lies weakly in bed, father death hovering near. Grief suddenly overwhelming her, Rosella runs from the room. Oh, father, she sobs, you're still young. You should have many years ahead of you. Well, apparently we're not going to be able to keep up with this. Do you really mean that, a soft voice asks. Who's speaking to me? Let's just forget that the, uh, Rosella looks up. Let's just, I'll just read what she's actually saying. I am. Look in the magic mirror. To your right. No, wait, your left. Who are you? Uh-huh. This is gonna take longer than I thought. Okay, th this doesn't just, just not work for me. For those of you in the mirror, who are you, she queries. I am the fairy Genista. In my land of Tamir, there is a remarkable tree. This tiny tree needs 100 years to bear a single fruit. But this is no ordinary fruit, for if a person were to eat it, they would find that good health and well-being would be theirs for many years. Well, that's some good fruit. Rosella is much heartened by this news. Where is this land of... Where is this land of Tamir? Gestina smiles. Tamir is very far away, but with my magic, I can bring you here. Well, on with it. Rosella senses there is more to this story. But I suppose there are some problems. Again, Genista smiles. Yes, you are correct, Rosella. If you are willing to come to Tamir, I will explain the situation. However, once I bring you here, I can't send you back. You will have to help me first. Confused, Rosella says, I don't... I don't know. What if I can't help you or find the tree? Then you are boned. You must decide now, Rosella. My powers are growing weaker by the minute. <laughs> now the fairy is but a faint glimmer and her voice barely audible. If you care f for your father, say yes now. And suddenly she is gone. Yes! Poof. The lovely fairy, the lovely fairy speaks. I am the fairy Ganister. Welcome to Tamir. Yeah. 
Rosella looks awestruck at the fairy. She is stunningly beautiful, but there is still a certain sadness to her. Finally, Rosella speaks. I know you would like to help me in some way, but I don't know how I could... I need to help you in some way, but I don't know how I can help a fairy. And Ganestar looks sadder than ever. You're wrong, Rosella. You see, I'm losing my magical powers. Yesterday, as I was strolling through the woods, the let... She ain't... Something from... I will die in 24 hours if my talisman is not returned. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, I, I, I've seen enough. Uh, hopefully I managed to e edit in uh, the uh, opening for this. I've play I tried playing this before yesterday, and I already screwed myself over. Hello, unicorn. Of which I can do nothing with now. That comes later. So yeah, I had, in true Sierra Adventure style, I had screwed myself over, not even, not even 15 minutes into the game. I had ensured that I would never be able to get to, uh, hey little frog, never be able to complete the game. Oh, well, that's maybe that may or may not be true. Throw ball into pond. You accidentally drop the golden ball into the pond. From atop a lily pad, a large green frog leaps into the water and disappears from view. A few moments later, the frog emerges with yes, your lost ball in its mouth. It seems as if the frog is kindly returning your gold ball to you. So yeah, um, the story of the game, in case I am not able to edit in the opening, is King Graham has fallen ill, and Rosella is off on a quest to find a fruit that can cure him. Pick a frog. Squinching up your nose in disgust, you catch the large frog and hold it in your hand. It stares at you with its big, bulgy eyes and wobbles its throat. Kiss frog. You look at the frog's green lips. Mmm, good. You feel silly doing this as you slowly put your mouth against the frogs. Suddenly the little green frog changes into a handsome prince. Who are you? The prince demands. I thought you were supposed to be a princess. Why, well, you're nothing more than a peasant girl. You blanch a bit at that remark, but say nothing. Well, Tata, he says. I'm off. Here, you may keep this. To your surprise, he tosses the little golden crown to you as he takes his leave. Good riddance, you think. Take ball. Because it's mine. Now, let's tr do something I didn't do yesterday. That's not a good idea right now. Well, shove it. Cemetery. Oh, it's Pan, it is. Can't do anything with him right now. Well, well. That's right, put it down. It's mine now. Take bow and arrow. <laughs> yes. It's all mine. This is not a good place to be. You again. No. An ogre lives down there. 
and he will kill you but good. Hmm. Knock on door. You knock loudly on the small door. No answer. Open door. Look house. This is the main room of the Seven Dwarves' cozy treehouse. What a mess it is! Clean! Hey, I didn't make the rules. Funny how none of the male adventurers had to do something like this. That, put that away, wash this. Sweep that. You hear the dwarves approaching. You watch quietly as the dwarves file in one by one, get a bowl of soup, and take a seat at the table, completely ignoring the fact that a strange woman has entered their abode and cleaned their shit up. Seriously, is no one gonna comment on this? intruded into your house. I've touched your personal possessions. This dwarf must be really hungry. He's getting two bowls of soup. The pig. He's going to be a fat fattyson. The seven dwarves seem very pleased that you've tidied their messy home. One politely asks your name. You tell him and he cordially invites you to sit down with them and eat the bowl of soup he got for you. How very kind. You eat, you s sit yourself at the table and begin to eat the surprisingly delicious soup. You politely talk to the dwarf nearest you. Where are you from, Rosella? You tell him... Daventry. Hmm. The dwarf thinks for a moment. Never heard of it. Again, you engage in conversation. Is Daventry far from Timir? The dwarf wonders. Very far. You tell them. How did you get here? They ask. As you don't want to go into the, into the specifics, you tell them. By the sea. By sea, rather. Yeah. That answer seems to satisfy them as they return to their eating. Nom 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 Anything else to say? We speak to the nearest dwarf again. He wonders why you are here in Tamir. You explain that you are in the service of Ganesta, the good fairy, who wishes to regain her magic talisman from the clutches of Loletta, the bad fairy. Well, young lady, the dwarf states, I don't envy you. You're much braver than I am dealing with that evil fairy. Yeah, those two terms don't really go together very well. But, yeah. I may have missed that plot point when I was explaining what was going on in this game. See, a fairy had contacted Rosella and told her about the fruit, and in order to get it, she had to agree to help her. Without that talisman, she shall die. We just have to wait for her to finish. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gobble, gobble. It's time for the little men to go back to the mine. Goodbye, and thanks for the soup! Oh, goodbye, and thanks for the soup. You finished your soup also. It was the best soup you've ever tasted. Maybe though you were just really hungry. Clean! I hope that's the last of it. What have we here? Look, pouch. There's a blue pouch in the center of the table. Take, 
pouch. Open pouch. You open the diamond pouch and look inside. Many diamonds flash and sparkle from within. Carefully you close it again so as not to lose any. Well, golly gee willikers. We can't just leave something like that lying around. It would only be right to give it back. This is what I did not do before. I fell. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go. There we are. Hey, Mac. Return. Pouch. Try standing in front of the head dwarf. Isn't that what I'm doing? Which one's the head dwarf? Give pouch. Look dwarf. One dwarf appears to be idling by the diamond bucket. Okay. Seven dwarves, yada yada yada. So it's gotta be him. How much more in front of him do I need to be? Give pouch. Oh my god, game, if you do not stop with this nonsense. <clears throat> Being an honest person, you offer the forgotten pouch of diamonds to the dwarf. His gruff exterior softens a bit. Nah, you can keep it. We got plenty here. We also have an extra lantern we ain't using. Here, go ahead and take it. The dwarf gruff, dwarf's gruffness returns as he says, Now skedaddle out of here! That is what I didn't do. Without that lantern, things are going to be very difficult in the future. Like, impossible. Hmm. Look. Wood. Is that something I can take? Okay, no. That must be somewhere else. At one point, you do requ acquire a wooden board. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Run, Rosella, run! We must startle the bird. Take worm. <laughs> yes. Delightful. Not going up there yet. Let's see, what do we do next? Look... Crow. The raven doesn't look to be a friendly bird at all. Yes, I have suspicions about that bird. Now, I have played this before, and I think I've even beaten it. But it has been so long, I can't e I couldn't tell you how I did it. Look, shelves. You examine the few remaining books on the bookshelves. Only one catches your attention. It is entitled, The Complete Works of William Shakespeare. Take book. You remove the Shakespeare book from the shelf and carry it with you. I also didn't do this. Or, the, or what I'm about to do now. Look, painting. 
An interesting portrait of a young girl hangs above the fireplace. You gaze at it intently and notice that her eyes seem to stare at the left wall of the parlor. Examine wall. You examine the left wall very closely and notice a little latch. Flip latch. You flip the latch in the wall and discover, and behold, you have discovered a secret door. Take shovel. Save because this is very treacherous. If you fall here, well, maybe not here, but if you fall when you get up there, you're dead. Oh boy, slow down even more. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on. Thank God for railings. There better be something up here. Uh. Um, am I going? Hello? For crying out loud, game. Go up the stairs. This game is getting on my nerves. Oh my god, go up the stairs, Rosella! Climb... Stairs! I don't care! Use the bloody stairs! Oh, now you do it. Rasm, frasm, brick and brick and the sun. No good. Don't you dare fall. I'm not angry. Not at all. Why would I be? Not like I wasted a whole bunch of, um, a whole lot of time trying to climb these freaking stairs. Still don't understand how up suddenly became, f um, facing that way. Okay, save. And da, 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 da. Ah. Nope, 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 wrong way. Come 
Come on, a little more. Ah, come on. Nope, 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 nope. Come on, almost there. Finally! Look. A dusty old pipe organ sits in the center of the tower. Look. Organ. I have a bad feeling about this. Play. Organ? Sit. I have a bad feeling. I feel like I may have been just wasted everybody's time. What? Better to move. Play organ. What are those things on the floor? What a virtuoso you are, Rosella! Of course, it did absolutely nothing. L look. Floor? Okay, then. We didn't do that. I don't know what you're talking about. Harumph. All right then. Um, I suppose next we'll um, well, we'll see about helping some guy. Oh, wait, I got a better idea. Talk to Bard. You say hello to the minstrel who looks like you want surprised. Well, well, who do we have here? He asks. You introduce yourself as Rosella. Hello, Rosella. The minstrel says, let me play for you one of my favorite tunes. And he begins to play an old ballad. Unfortunately, it appears that his musical skills are quite limited as he plucks and plings and pings his way through an otherwise beautiful song. Give book. You hand the Shakespeare book to the minstrel. Curiously, he opens it and begins to read aloud, first hesit hesitantly, then with increased forcefulness as, begins, as he begins to get into it. Suddenly, he stops and looks at you. This is wonderful! He exclaims. This gives me a new lease on... No. This gives me a new lease on life. No longer am I a mere minstrel. Now I will become a famous actor. To be or not to be. How's that? He then gives you his loot and bids you farewell wanders off and wanders off to stardom. Bullshit. Take 
loot. No, okay, good. Now we need to find Pan. He'll show up, I think. Maybe this isn't the wrong, wrong area. I don't know where he shows up at. Hmm. I could deal with him now, but I'm not going to. I feel like it's a little too early. I wouldn't want the thing to wear off. You know what I'm planning on doing? Well, good for you. Play l loot. Pan has ceased his dancing and now looks at you and the loot curiously. Give loot. Okay. Pan gratefully accepts your gift of the loot and in return he gives you his flute. Happy now, he dances away with it. Well, he's certainly able to play it very well. Given anything, it's like his first time ever playing it. So yeah, I didn't do that before either. I mean, I remembered that I needed to get the loot and needed to give it to Pam, but I couldn't remember how to get it from him. I had completely forgotten about the book. Not getting anything, old man. Do 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 do. And we shall knock on the door because we are polite. You knock loudly on the shanty door. A woman's voice answers. Just come on in. There you go, mate. You offer the pouch of diamonds to the fisherman who takes it gladly. Wife, give this girl my fishing pole in trade. He tells his tired wife. Obediently, she retrieves the pole and hands it to you. Thank you so much, she says, smiling. You've certainly helped us. Excuse me. All right. Now to do the uh, well. I don't even know what I need this for. But what the heck? Put worm on hook. Fish. Chances are I will not get anything for quite some time. But we mustn't be deterred. Fish will be ours. Give me fish. I must have the fish. 
Almost immediately you feel a sharp tug on the line. Something pulls and fights your line as you slowly reel it in. There it is. You have caught yourself a fine fat fish. Excuse me, he has a glandular problem. And also, that's about it for recording today, I think. Save our game. And when we come back, maybe we will be able to get further. Maybe. I think we're going to be climbing that one mountain I said we're not going to climb just yet. Because, yeah. So, yeah, I am the Blues 32. This is King's Quest 4, The Perils of Rosella. TTFN. Ta-ta for now.